So the first thing we're gonna do is I've already got the template designed and I'm going to start the machine to print on two different popsicle uh, cookies with two different designs. So it gets a little bit loud because I've got the, the phone right up in blue. cookie here, our central one, is the one that we're going to be working on. However, all of these, this entire set are either mm -hmm. shaker cookies or they have cello sheets on them. This one is got a um, smart sheet that I printed with big blue. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's a bumblebee body. Okay. But... It's a shaker cookie. Gotcha. Okay. So I'll get that one out of our way. We'll also move this one. This one is a picture frame cookie that has a cello sheet in the center. And that's all edible. Now, if you don't know, cello sheets are completely clear when you work with them. So you can design anything and print anything on them. See this portion here is the cello sheet that's clear that's not been printed on. And then I printed the honeybee onto that design for this cookie. That's so cool how clear it is. It's kind of hard to see with anything behind it though. Move it away from you a little bit. Hang on. Okay. So cello sheets really have no taste. No. Um, the first thing I always do when I get a product is put it in my mouth. I'm like a two-year-old or like my dog. Um, okay. Gotta see how it's going. Now cello sheets, Tina, we sell and you can actually print them on your blue food printer. Um, and Tina, um, I have the big blue and I believe you have big blue as well, right? You can print an entire A4 sheet on your print bed, whether it be a cello sheet, a smart sheet, a wafer paper, all of those. Or you can use small pieces of it to print on. This portion of the cookie, this popsicle, is cello sheet that's been printed with big blue. And then I attach it to the royal icing after I printed it. And the way that the cello sheet works, it gives you a, a high gloss finish. And so it's very shiny. So it, it looks like a popsicle. And what is the texture like? In your mouth? Um, both. Okay. Whenever you're, um, when you bite into it, it just kind of dissolves in your mouth. It doesn't change the flavor or the texture of your cookie. You made it get a little bit of a bite that you didn't have with your with your cookie beforehand, depending on um, how hard your royal icing dries. I use corn syrup in my royal icing, so I have a soft bite. But I don't find that the cello sheet changes that texture much. Yeah, I agree with, I agree with that. But I love the way that it gives you different options to decorate cookies and get so many different looks. Now, the top portion of this popsicle shaker cookie is a cello sheet. Okay. And you can yeah, see the light is, is flickering off of that cello sheet. Yeah, it looks good. Um, what okay. is the bee made from? Okay, so the bee is printed on wafer paper, and this is regular density wafer paper. The little... Um, bumblebee royal icing transfer that's also at the top of this cookie right here was printed with big blue and that was on wet royal icing 
And I'm putting and I links several... to programs. Say that again? I, I'm putting the links up for everybody. Okay. And there's also several of those little bee transfers inside the sprinkle mix. So you can custom design all of your sprinkles to match whatever design you're going for. Crystal's asking about your royal icing. Okay, I will. I'll post um, the link to Ginny's Dream meringue powder, and that's the royal icing recipe that we use. Okay, and then underneath all those sprinkles, you see the honeycomb print. That is actually a smart sheet that's incorporated on the first cookie before we layered the top portion. This is two cookies. Usually with shaker cookies, you, you have two or three cookies stacked on top of each other in order to have that space so that your sprinkles can move about. Okay. Can you bring that cookie closer to the camera for a minute? Yep. I can see them, but I want people to really see them. There we go. Just hold it still just for a second. It'll focus. You guys can see that better that way. You can see those divots. Um, all right, hold on one second because we have questions and statements okay. that I want to read real quick. Um, Jesse Ann said, cellos are soft in all you do and also the environment. Um, and she also says, if you put a cello into dry, no moisture, you will get a crispy cello. Um, and Evelyn said, so sorry if I missed something, but can you run different papers at the same time or different times? If you're talking about on the blue, um, you can run anything as long as at the same time as long as it's within five millimeters of one another. And in fact, I printed the cello sheet and the wafer paper at the same time with different designs. Yeah. Okay. And then this top portion, you see the sparkle that looks like ice on your popsicle. That is actually mm -hmm. made from pulverized wafer paper. And then I added edible glitter to it. That's so cool. Yes, the smart sheet is also 100% edible. The difference between the smart sheet and the wafer paper is what they're made out of. Wafer paper is a potato based product, a potato starch based product. And the, the uh, smart sheets are cornstarch. So they are 100% edible. So um, when would you use one versus the other then? What's the difference? Um, it depends on what you're going for. Like if um, I had printed the butterfly on a smart sheet, I wouldn't have the movement of the wings like I do with the wafer paper. So if I want something to stand off of the cookie, then I use wafer paper. Gotcha. Now the smart sheet, I can actually emboss and achieve high definition embossing with those sheets. I can't do that with wafer paper. So it's like a tougher wafer paper. Yes. But it withstands the moisture, whereas wafer paper doesn't always do that well. Okay. All right. So. Let me make sure that I'm in camera view here before we get started. So I have a popsicle cookie and then I had another popsicle cookie and I cut out a square in that section of that cookie. It's same cutter, but then I just cut out the rectangle, sorry, out of the center of it. Now, what I do is on this first cookie, I'm going to be adding a smart sheet so that we get that background. And the smart sheet, I've actually embossed and got a honeycomb look. Okay. You guys you see that pattern? What do you do that with? I emboss with a Sizzix Big Shot. Now the key to great embossing is the smart sheet and paper potion. The paper potion is going to condition your smart sheet. And then I run it through the embossing folder with the Sizzix to achieve the design that I'm looking for. Okay. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put some color onto that smart sheet. 
And for this one, I'm just going to use a dusting powder and you can use any brand dusting powder that you want. Tonight, I'm going to use um, one called Caramel Color from the Sugar Art. And then I just take a blending brush, a small blending brush, tap into the color, remove the excess. And then my pattern is on the smart sheet. So I'm actually, it's like coloring book pages and I just color between the lines that I have there. Okay. So Tiffany, you can actually go to our YouTube page and you'll see um, if you look up uh, Becky's lives, they're up there and then she goes into this whole series about um, basically card making with edible products. Correct. And it's, we, yeah. we, we called it high resolution embossing because I can get high definition prints and I get consistent prints every single time that I make these and put them on my cookies. They're all going to look the same. Okay. So I would just continue coloring that all the way across. Try to keep my work area a little cleaner. Yeah, okay. Tiffany, that's common. A lot of people go from paper arts to cookie decorating. It's very similar. Yeah, I had never, I had never decorated anything. <laughs> All right, so I've got this piece completely covered with my my edible dust, and again, you could choose any color that you want, and then I've got to secure that onto my cookie, and I do that with royal icing. Okay, very precise here. Okay. Wow, that took a lot of skill to get in that pattern. <laughs> Don't you love it? Uh huh. That's why you're on to teach us all that skill. Well, you know, somebody's got to do it, right? Mm hmm. I can okay. do that. And then I just take a thingamajini or a boo boo stick, whatever you want to use, or a spatula, and just smooth that out so that I get good contact between the smart sheet and the royal icing. And a lot of people always say, well, when should I remove the smart sheet? Well, you're not going to because it's going to become one with your royal icing. Okay. And it's going to stay on your cookie. It doesn't change the texture of your cookie. It doesn't change the flavor of your cookie. Even though the smart sheets do have a nice vanilla taste to them, they're not going to interfere with your cookie flavors. Actually, the smart sheets, I think you're confused with some of the other papers. That has no flavor whatsoever. It's like the cello sheets. There's no flavoring. It doesn't taste like anything. Uh, let me see here. And Crystal, it is doable. Are you eating it? You know why it tastes like vanilla? Why? Paper potion. Because I use paper potion on it. That's what it is. You're sitting there eating it. <laughs> <laughs> and it tastes really good. Yeah, that paper potion smells good and tastes good. Yep. Okay. So all I would do at this point is work the edges down on the side. And then I can take a pin blade and trim that off right at the edge of the cookie. Or I can just tear it since it's going to be covered with another cookie. I'm not really worried about the edges because they're going to be covered up. Okay. And it's soft enough that you can actually just manipulate it and get it the way that you want it on your cookie. They like cookie tasting. I do. Well, I eat it all the time. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, it does taste vanilla. No, I know yep. I'm not crazy. I know. And I was well, like shocked. I'm like, what? How did you get that like wrong? Like you know everything. But that's why. Well, because I always condition them with paper potion. <laughs> and I, you know, I've never eaten yeah. it. 
Just playing. Just playing. What are you doing now? All right. So all I did was take the top cookie, put some royal icing, sandwich it in between there. Okay. And then any royal icing that squirts out, I just take my thingamajini and take that off to clean up the edges a little bit. And then I'm going to take this cookie and turn it. And I'm actually going to paint the entire thing with royal icing. You like my paintbrush? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why I wear gloves. Okay. So I would do this on the entire edge of the cookie and I have one already done because we're going to be running out of time if I don't move ahead and then I also flood the top of the cookie okay so now I have a two cookie depth treat I don't really like to go more than two when you do the three it's a little too much. And so using the cello sheet, that gives me the opportunity to just use the two cookies. Okay. So I've allowed that to dry because I don't want my sprinkles to stick to the royal icing while it's wet. I want those to move about freely. Before you do okay? this, Crystal wants to know about the pink thing. What is it? The thingamajini. This is from Jeannie's yeah. Dream, the creative cookier. And it's a boo-boo stick, and it helps you clean up any messes. It also has a scribe end that I can manipulate the royal icing to get out any rough areas and smooth it out. Okay? And then all I would do is take any sprinkle mix that you want, give a generous amount there, because we want to be able to see them, just like this one. Okay? And then I went one step farther and then added my little royal icing transfers into the, into this one. You can see the little bees in there. And I want to make sure that I put those in there because I made those specifically for this design. So we want them to be front and center. Okay. All right, so then the next portion of this would be to add our cello sheet to the top. And somebody asked earlier, is it going to interfere by putting it onto the wet royal icing? No, it's going to actually help it adhere. Or if you um, so choose, you can also use dilution solution and just wet your royal icing and then secure your cello sheet that way. As long as the surface is a little bit damp, the cello sheet is going to combine with that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna have to take my gloves off in order to get this cello sheet off of the backing. Now the cello sheet is again, completely transparent, okay? Is that a problem? Do what? Is it a problem because it's completely transparent? It is because now that I've taken it out of the packaging and I'm going to be using it, it has a sheet on the back of it. It has an, uh, an acetate sheet. Mm -hmm. So now I can't tell which side is the edible product and which side is the plastic. Right? So yeah. what you have to do is take a little bit of water and wet your finger and go to the corner of your of your paper and then you're going to feel a stickiness so the sticky side is the side that you want to put on to your edible product the other one is your backing so this is my plastic backing that i just took off Okay. And then this is the cello sheet that I'm going to be putting over the top of this design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of dilution solution 
onto a clean brush. Now you can use paper potion or um, Little Honey's glue too, correct? Correct. Yeah. In fact, you know what? I have both yeah. of those here, so let's just use some Little Honey's glue. How's that? Woo, Little Honey's glue. Because I like the little precision top on there. It's pivoting. Pivot. <laughs> But yes, you or you can apply it with royal icing. Okay. All right. So then I would just lay that on there. Make sure that it's secure all the way around. 